You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters, and joining me here at Avast Recording Company, it's Laura Gibson. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be back. It is so lovely to see you, and even more lovely that you have a gorgeous new album called Goners. Oh. I'm excited to hear new music from it. Oh, thanks so much. Excited to play. Laura Gibson live on KEXP. So beautiful. Laura Gibson is live on KEXP. That song, Tenderness, from her new album, Goners. That's out on local label, Barsook Records. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Got another one? Yeah, we're going to play the title track, um, the song called Goners. Here comes the end of the future. Why wait any longer for something? 
live at a vast recording company on KEXP with Laura Gibson and the new album Goners. That is the title track. That was so lovely. Oh, thanks so much. So great to have you here. I want to thank you and your band for coming up from Portland. Yeah. It is always such a pleasure to see you. And your new album, such a treat. I remember reading a few years ago where you had felt that you were maybe not going to keep making music, that maybe it wasn't something you wanted to do anymore yet just a couple of years on the heels of Empire Builder. Here's another new record. What keeps yeah. you coming back to songwriting? Because yeah. I know you do a lot of other things. You're very um, multi-talented. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, I, I tend to write songs when I when I feel it's such a form of expression for me. And, um, and if I often, I think when I finish a record and, and tour it, I... Every time I think, I wonder if I'll make another record. Like I feel like I said what I needed to say, and then of course life happens, and 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 um, and I need to. We all need to say more things, and um, and and I do. I always I feel very fortunate. Um, this is my fifth record, and um, I think every time I've finished a record, I've I've had this feeling that I've just built a a raft to save myself <laughs> in a way, and um, and. So I think I, I tend to take a while. I, I went back to grad school for a couple years um, before coming back and, and doing another record. So Yeah, how did that influence your songwriting? Because it was a creative writing Yeah, I, I did an MFA in um, fiction writing um, at Hunter College in New York. And it was one of those things where I, um, it was my dream program. Some of my favorite writers taught there and I um, just thought, well, I'll apply. There's no way I'll get in, and it'll be crazy to move to New York. And then I got one of the spots and um, and went out there. And um, I think a few things. Um, 
I think it's made me kind of gravitate towards writing, like including concrete objects in my songs. I think um, you can get away with a lot in songwriting because there's all these other things happening. And, um, and so it can be a little more abstract. But when you're writing fiction, you really have to ground these big abstract ideas like love and, and grief and, and death. Um, you, they have to kind of be ground in, in the world, um, whether it's the real world or, or an imaginative world. And, um, and so I think I, I really brought that into my songwriting. And, um, and a lot of these songs are kind of take place in this more surreal, dreamlike world. But there's a lot of objects um, within them, I guess I felt. I've heard you say before that you write grief songs, and I wonder if that's something that you're resigned to or something you've changed your feelings about over the years. Yeah, um, well, I think everything I've written has had something to do with grief, um, and it's such it's sort of the other side of the coin to love, and, and so it is just this big, you know, your awareness of grief grows as you get older, and um, and I, my, I lost my dad when I was a teenager and, and actually within a few months um, lost one of my best friends. Um, and so I had this very young, in the, my most formative years, um, I, this, I was kind of reckoning with grief and, and loss in a big way. And, um, and so I think, I feel like in a lot of ways, those year when I was um, end, of my, end of my 13th year, beginning of my 14th year, where my... Um, I feel like that's, so the artist part of me seemed, um, I always think was born in, in those losses. Um, and so I, I think I came to a point, I'd always kind of wanted to write a, a, a record, um, that really sort of looked, I guess, stared straight into the abyss <laughs> instead of sort of skirting around grief. And so I just thought I would give it a shot and, um, and it ended up, I think, and the songs are certainly about loss, and um, but they're less about the um, the immediate experience of loss and more about um, what loss tends to do throughout one's life and, and, and the ways that we um, share pain and the ways we uh, lash out or um, hide ourselves or crack ourselves open um, amidst big loss and, and big pain and... Um, and so that, that sort of became what the, what the record was. Songwriting and performing is such a powerful and emotional outlet, both for the songwriter and for the audience. And I wonder if that connection with the audience, with human beings, is part of why you keep coming back to yeah. songwriting and performing. Yeah, I always say that, um, you know, I'm at my most alone when I'm... Music is the thing that, that I'm most alone in when I'm doing it, but it's also the thing that I'm most deeply connected with other people when I'm doing it. And I think to hold both of those experiences is sort of the magic <laughs> of, of the thing that I do is, um, you know, so much of these songs were written alone in a room and, um, and you know, and kind of creeped into darker territory than I'd ever been in songwriting. And, and, um, and that experience, you know, there's this long <laughs> kind of quiet period where no one's, no one's heard the record. And then I'm just on the, the other side of that where I've gotten to play um, for the last six weeks, gotten to play these songs and, and talk to the people that they've, um, that they've been meaningful for. And, and that is such an amazing thing. It just feels like such a miracle every time <laughs> to, um, that there is a connection made. Through word, through you know, words rhyming and melody, and um, and somehow, um, it's uh, this this way of being connected to other people. Your music and especially your voice is so pure and honest. And talking about connecting with people, in uh, reading about this new record, I was reminded that you were sort of the inspiration for NPR's Tiny Desk concert, oh, yeah. <laughs> which has gone on to grow into an amazing big thing. Um, actually, it's a touring show. Now we've had them at KEXP a couple of times. And mm -hmm. what an amazing um, thing to have been the first artist that yeah. inspired them. to. Yeah. I mean, that sort of hearing you live was where they came up with the idea to do that. Yeah, I love telling that story because you think, you know, that I inspired them. And it seemed, um, it, because it, 
it was such an ill-fated show that actually <laughs> that, that inspired them. Um, I had played the show at South by Southwest and I'd you know, traveled all the way down there and, um, and had, you know, bought my flights. You didn't, I didn't get paid. And, um, and I just um, played the show for, for a full room. They'd, the bar had decided not to... Um, charge so they just let anyone <laughs> anyone so off the street all. come in. I think it was like St. Patrick's Day there's probably a game on and um and so there was just people just flowing in just to I think they probably were walking down the street and thought oh there's a quiet there's a bar I can have a conversation in because my voice is so quiet and um and so it, it really like in the moment of playing that show I, I could see could see Bob Boylan out there and recognized because and Stephen Thompson and they'd um both um, written um, or like featured by music in different points. And I saw them and I was like, oh, I wish they were not watching this terrible show happen right now. And then I saw Steven like raising his fist at the sound engineer to, to bring up the volume. And, um, and I was like, well, at least they're with me. They're fighting, <laughs> fighting with me. And, um, and, and so it, uh, afterwards they came up and said, I have an idea. And, um, and it, I mean, it's one of those things you can have ideas and they sometimes, you know, slip, you, you bring it up one, one drunken night at South by Southwest and they never come back around. And so I happen to be coming through Washington, DC and, um, and the stars sort of aligned for that first one to happen. And, um, and it's, it's so, you know, it's those moments often I've found time and time again in playing music that it's often those moments that you think, oh, this is, this is it. I'm I'm ready to throw in the towel because this this is not working. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's working, and uh, and it was certainly one of those moments that show. And then it um, out of it, this amazing series was born. So, do you remember was, how long ago that was? Uh, yeah, that would have been. Um, I mean, it's just over ten. It would I think it'd be eleven years this March because we just did a little interview about it for the tenth anniversary. Um, this past spring. So something to look forward to checking out. Well, what a springboard to something so incredible. And yeah, fun. yeah, it's, it's pretty wonderful. We're live on KEXP with Laura Gibson. She's got a new record on Barsook Records called Goners, and she's going to play a couple more songs. Yeah, I'm going to move over and play guitar. All me. right. And Alina's going to come over to the piano. <laughs> diamond hands and the quick wit sentences I have no plans you're the only home I ever wanted now five floors above the siren moans steam pipes ticking on babies through the walls love is a songbird with a sickle claw you with a slow joke grin watch the town torn down and built again in the pause between the riddle and the punchline Tethered tight to your chest But I was never one To second guess Or draw a line Between love and fear of loneliness Sawdust hair 
other way to say I want you I ought to pull this hook from my cheek but I'll keep on shouting from the fire escape I'll keep shouting from a white van window from a bridge from a field from a ferry in the harbor from the soul dark wound in the mountain I want you I want you I want you Gibson live on KEXP. You guys ready? Okay. On the eve of your departure. sat beside you on the kitchen floor you said darkness has no virtue of its own it's only darkness what is lost is lost you were tired of metaphor
So beautiful. Laura Gibson live here on KEXB from a vast recording company, the new album Goners. So great to have you all. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much, Cheryl. Thanks for having us.